Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, embarking on a two case journey here with 2023 Topps Chrome Baseball Hobby Edition, 24 box total, 24 autos. This is Pick Your Team 11. All card ship, a lot of great stuff here. Big thanks to this group for making it happen on a hump day, on a Wednesday right here. Hmm. Oh, you know what, I did not set the focus on this camera. We'll do it live. Set it right about, how close my card is, right about there? Right about there is pretty good. All right, so now that we can see it, big thanks to this group right here on a hump day, Wednesday. Sal with that last spot mojo star next to his name with the Giants, my rivals. But thanks to Sal for getting them. And here's the first of two hobby cases. Now, baseball fans, I did load up another dual case break. So we can keep working on those. We've got a brand new release today. That would be uh, 2023 Panini. Immaculate Collegiate Football. So if you want to get in on that, please do so. Get your teams before they end up in some sort of random number block situation, some sort of filler situation. And settle in, folks. <clears throat> this is going to be a long break. Kick back and relax. We've got NT Baseball also on jazbeescasebreaks.com. So while I'm ripping this, this is a great time to go to jazbeescasebreaks.com if you're watching live and uh, start, start picking up some spots and prepare for the next break. Um, I think there's a football mixer, you know, that's uh, a spot away. No, I appreciate the help, Sal. It's a good way to start the day. There's a football mixer, one full spot left, last filler. The NT baseball uh, is in a random number block, and I think that's... Uh, I think that's only eight of 10 spots away. Are the Royals already gone, Sheila? You gotta be faster. Can't snooze. The second you hesitate on your team, ladies and gentlemen, they can be snatched away from you. So go to jazbeescasebreaks.com, buy them up. Immaculate Collegiate Football, brand new release. Current draft class as well. The 2023 draft class, same, same with that there. I know it seems like there's a lot of teams left and a lot of people may be thinking, oh, I'll just wait. You know, I'll, ju I'll just wait to grab my team a little bit later only to realize your team may be snatched up by someone else and then, and then you'll be bummed out. Don't be bummed out. I want you to get your team. I want you to get your big hits. Hopefully, we'll have a lot of nice stuff to send you. Our first bit of color here is Marcus Stroman to 399. That will be for the Cubbies. That's going to go to Stephen Carney with the Cubs. Got a Josh Young, and our first autograph is Nolan Jones. 
rookie for the Rocks. He's been getting some uh, regular playing time with the Rockies. Nathaniel with the Rockies on the board. And of course, we'll do an autograph recap at the end of the uh, at the end of the break, along with some other notables. Otani, part of that MVP buyback program that the uh, that tops reintroduced. That's going to go to the Angels. Kenny with that one. I mean, we're I think we're assuming that he is going to win AL MVP. It was Austin Riley to one night? I'd be shocked if he didn't. All right, there's an Austin Riley. Tim with the Braves. Francisco Alvarez, that's going to be for Joe and the Mets. All right, first box down of 24. Many more to go. Thanks for getting into it, folks. Gaspycasebreaks.com. We got more of this in the store. We got football new releases in the store. We got football mixers that are close to filling. We got a full case of NT baseball that's close to filling. So we can put in a lot of work today. And if, uh, I don't know, if this means anything to you, uh, this is, I only do two YouTube nights a week. So this is my second of those two. I'll be on Fanatics Live tomorrow, but. But if, if, you, if you think that I give you a certain bit of luck or you just like breaking with me or whatever the case may be, put in your orders. Make it happen. Another dual caser in the store as well. like Topps Chrome, and if you like chasing the top players in Topps Chrome, we got a 10 case break going on on Fanatics Live. That's going to break tomorrow. It's a 10 case pick your player break, and I think there's like, a, it's over 300, almost 400 players on this checklist. Pick your player break. And I think there's less than 10 players left. Nice Michael Harris. Rookie Prism. Tim with the Braves. Shay Langoliers and Josh Smith, the other Josh. This is going to go to Tim and the Rangers. Base auto. You got Carlos Perez to 399. That'll be for the White Sox. That's for Ryland. And there's Adley Rushman, all those will go to Aaron and the O's. Mayhew. There's a Volpe and a Corbin Carroll, and usually an Acuna Jr. Yep, there he is. There's this guy, you got Rosario to 299. 
Padres. That'll be for Michael. Ronald Cunha Jr. He's he is still your favorite. Little top loader dust here. It's going on here. So he's the favorite for NL MVP. Who's your favorite for the NL Rookie of the Year award? There's Anthony Volpe, who's also been playing well this season. What's going on in the world today? In the world of baseball. Oh no, Dominican Republic prosecutor says division specializing in minors and gender violence leading Wander Franco investigation. Hmm. It's according to ESPN, prosecutor in Dominican Republic investigation, blah, blah, blah. Told the prosecutor, the Associated Press, uh, investigation is open. Gathering evidence and testimony. Next week, we may be able to give some of the necessary information without hurting the investigation. All right. Still on the restricted list for about six games. Well, let's see. We'll see how this turns out. What's wild is that all... I mean, as far as... I haven't really been deep diving into this story, but as, as far as I know, it's just a lot of social media speculation that's running like wildfire. And as many accusatory posts as there have been, there have also been counter posts that say, that, that say this is not the case. I don't know. So hopefully it'll be much ado about nothing. But it's certainly... I certainly hope that it turns out to be nothing. Shay McClanahan. I have a bit of bad news here for the Rays. Tommy John surgery, so we probably won't even see him in 2024. Here's some news from the Associated Press for Gilo's Royals. MLB Commissioner Rob Manfred threw a support behind a new stadium for the Royals on Wednesday. Cedric Mullins to 350. Yoshida's got a chance at the AL Rookie of the Year award here. Cedric Mullins will go to Aaron. Kenny has the Red Sox. Here's a Jordan Alvarez photo negative. Greg with Houston. Volpe, Carroll, and you know, no, no Ronald Acuna Jr. here. Saw that on the local news. Don't see why he cares. Well, he's the commissioner for Major League Baseball. That's why he cares. There's Mark Vientos. He's supposed to care about every team in the uh, in Major League Baseball, right? There's the Ronald Acuna Jr. I think, yeah, I think I saw a relic down here. And it is the Crone Zone, Jay Cronenworth. Michael Stapleton, the Padres.
And you can look up those series of letters and numbers to see uh, what date that jersey was pulled and perhaps even look up the box score in a maybe baseballreference.com game log and then see what, if anything, he did that day. We have seen instances where uh, we looked up the box score and it's, it's ended up being like some sort of, um, no, it's not numbered by the way. We've seen some sort of uh, I don't know, crazy thing. If you care, the Astros won't have any rings right now and I wouldn't need a VPN. Well, <laughs> I apologize, Gilo. I should have been more clear. He cares about the profits of ownership, thus increasing values of, uh, of baseball teams. Oh, fan experience. He doesn't care about us, dude. but he does care about putting money into the pockets of Royals owners. Ownership. New stadium helps a lot with that, especially if, uh, if baseball, if uh, the public funds three quarters of the stadium. So Manfred threw a support behind UCA for the Royals on Wednesday, calling both of their potential sites near downtown Kansas City unbelievably high quality for the type of revenue-producing, multi-use districts that are necessary for small market clubs to compete. Spoke for an hour at the Urban Youth Academy, which is de designed to encourage interstate youth in baseball, alongside Royals chairman John Sherman and Bob Kendrick, the president of the nearby Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. The Royals plan to announce in September whether they will build a replacement for Coffin Stadium in the East Village, an area near the T-Mobile Center, and the existing Power and Light District or across the Missouri River in Clay County where there's more land available for a potentially larger baseball village. This is a tremendous opportunity for this community. Forget the Royals, Manfred said. Either of these sites are outstanding sites for a new ballpark. Either present the opportunity for, inter for entertainment district development around the ballpark. I think in our economic system, new facilities provide a ball club with an opportunity for revenue generation that simply doesn't exist in older footprints. At some point, great ballpark here, but having said that, it is an older ballpark that does not have the kind of premier revenue generating opportunities that you get in a new facility for a market this size. The Royals have said the new ballpark will cost about $2 billion. Most will be privately funded, but a portion of the money is expected to come from the renewal of a 3 8 cent sales tax that has been used uh, has been used the, that has been used the upkeep used for the uh, they missed a word Associated Press uh, that has been used for the upkeep of Coffin Stadium. Oh, however, the sales tax was passed by voters in Jackson County, but if the if it's for Clay County, that would be something different. All right, interesting. There's more to this story. Subrex that I'll get to in the next box. Oh, there's a Ronald Acuna Jr. refractor and an Adley Rushman prism. Some nice stuff here. These are the sort of parallels we want to see. Adley Rushman going to Aaron Billingsley. Ronald Acuna Jr., probably your NL MVP, going to the Braves. And here is just a base rookie card for Adley Rushman. Ooh, Cubs GM has stated that P. Crow Armstrong will get the call up in September. Yeah, I would have been surprised if he didn't. Rosters expand in September. Guys like him should get a cup of coffee, get a taste of the major leagues. Here's Logan O'Hoppy to 250. Yeah, Gilo saying, hey, we're not Oakland. Our stadium has been renovated. But what are your arguments against a new stadium and a baseball village? Ooh, nice Corbin Carroll refractor. Gila's Royals guy that lives in Kansas City, for context. Rob with the Diamondbacks, refractor Corbin Carroll. Nice, and Ronald Cunha Jr. here. And your autograph is this guy, Egai Rosario, for the Friars. That's going to be for Michael Sableton. Yoshida, Kettle Marte, 
pink speckle to 350, Diamondbacks. Another box. There's another factor that's coming into play here. Another fact is that the Royals have shared that tax revenue with the Chiefs, the Jackson County tax revenue. Because Coffin Stadium shares the Truman Sports Complex with Arrowhead Stadium, but the NFL franchise prefers Arrowhead Stadium rather than build a new and how those two franchises can continue to coexist in different locations is not entirely clear. Interesting. So you're, you're saying why not redevelop the existing area? Yeah, maybe they don't want to, yeah. You're saying the other proposed locations aren't that much better. Right, yeah, I would... You know, with, you can assume that the Chiefs, the Kansas City Chiefs are going to have, as long as Mahomes and Andy Reid are there, are going to have sustained success for the next five to ten years, right? You would think you would develop that area, especially since the Chiefs don't want to move, and kind of redevelop that area with the Chiefs. We build tons of housing there, tons of retail, and rejuvenate that part of town. But billionaire owners are weird. You know, maybe they're just like, I don't want to be next to the Chiefs. I want my own spot, a place that I can call my own. A place, a place where I say, I, I like that particular area, and I redeveloped it. Regardless of the choice of location, Sherman has said the new Royal Stadium will take about three years to complete, which would mean opening day for 2027 or 28. There's Josh Young, purple, nice, to 250. Tim Tyler, that's the time, kind of stuff we're looking for, Tim. Probably was on his way to being AL Rookie of the Year until, what, fractured his thumb or something like that? Might put a dent in his uh, campaign. Which may leave, leave the door open for someone like this. Gunnar Henderson. Rookie refractor for Aaron and the O's. So that might be a fun race to watch down the stretch. Or maybe that guy. And there's Dervis Garcia, Oakland A's, Stephen Carney. The A's are one of the cheapest teams, but has some of the biggest, uh, you know, quantity-wise, has some of the most autos and on the checklist. So there's some value there for sure. Man, if one or a couple of those guys turn into something, then you know, some good value there. It's Michael Harris refractor for Tim and the Braves. And we got Orange Wave, Jake McCarthy, 34 out of 99 for Rob and the Diamondbacks. All right, there we go. Got a Tristan Casas refractor, rookie refractor, base Adley Rushman. And there's the Jake McCarthy green wave. All right, another box down. Almost halfway through the first case. There's a lot of information in this article here. Regardless of the choice, blah, blah, blah. In a recent letter to fans, Sherman is saying that uh, the project would create 20,000 jobs, produce $1.4 billion in labor income, $2.8 billion in total economic output, 
and generate some $185 million more in regional economic output than the K does today. A lot of that money is coming from premier seating, club spaces that aren't at co possible at Coffin Stadium. It has long been one of the jewels of Major League Baseball, but is currently the fourth oldest park still in operation. Our region is at a critical juncture. And I say that in a positive way, Sherman says. We have a new airport. The World Cup is coming in 2026. We just hosted the NFL draft. We have a women's soccer game coming out of the ground on the riverfront, the only one of its kind. And the Chiefs and Royals are talking about doing some really special things for this community. Manfred pointed to the way new stadiums for the Nationals and Braves have driven revitalization and revenue. As Gila was saying, both of the Kansas City sites are optimal for development in that they are riddled with old and vacant buildings and empty lots, but both would require substantial investment in parking, ingress, egress, and other infrastructure, maybe public transportation, maybe a trolley system. But as Gila was saying, why not, why not just redevelop the current area? It's about the same similar quality. Maybe the desire for the royals to go out on their own. Now, I think the World Cup point was was more more of a was based off of our region is at a critical juncture. He's saying that Kansas City is a uh, is a cultural and sports hotspot, and that is as deserving of a new baseball stadium is what he's suggesting. But I'm kind of with you. Does it, does, it, does it seem unnecessary? Why not just renovate the current, not renovate the current stadium? I mean, you could rebuild on the current land or you can renovate the stadium. There's James Altman, rookie refractor. He's having a nice year. Michael with the Dodgers. Darvish for the Padres. I think the Royals could use a new stadium, though. I mean, those, those, those like premier seats and, 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 and suites, which definitely generates a lot of revenue. They could certainly use that. But why not, yeah, why not just develop the existing area, keep it near the Chiefs, make that kind of like a sports center. There's Brandon Lau to 199 for the Rays. That'll be for Chris. If you want to get another dual caser done, Rex, I am down. I've got plenty of time for it. There's Luis Liberto, uh, Liberato, that is. Another Adley Rushman. So you think there's ways to just, you're saying develop a good team. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. But again, greedy owners are gonna be like, they're gonna say, oh, I can't get that done. I can't invest in a team until I have a new stadium that generates a lot more money. So he's gonna cry poor and say he needs a new stadium. That'll get us a new TV deal. We'll say, we'll say all that sort of stuff. I think a, t a team that needs a new stadium more than the Royals, though, I think, is probably the Rays. 
let's move them across the bay into the other side of the bay where all the other teams play, Buccaneers and Tampa Bay Lightning. I think they could use a new stadium in that area more than the Royals could. There are ways to, I mean, I guess a shiny new stadium is always something that maybe ownership and maybe city officials want. But the Angels have have renovated, re-renovated, almost rebuilt the stadium inside out in the last, you know, 20 years. Dodgers have done a lot of upgrades to their stadium. They've got an old stadium. And they've managed to, to upgrade it in a way you know, over the decades to include all the, you know, luxury seating, premier seating, you know, corporate boxes and new center field area, which is awesome, sub grizzlies, you know, so it's out there. I don't know, sometimes owners see, you know, the Braves getting new seating, Nationals opening a new ballpark, and, and they're thinking, well, we want a new ballpark, so. Tim Anderson to 125. Stadium was renovated in the last decade, still feels new. Then what's this about, you know, this Associated Press article saying much of the revenue that the owner's talking about, so I'm talking on myself, I've got a drinking problem. Um, much of that money is gonna allegedly come from premier seating and club spaces that are not possible at Kauffman C. What's that all about? So this, this is why we have, you are my boots on the ground, ladies and gentlemen, so if, you, if you're a local in an area of sports that we're talking about, that's why we, that's why we need you guys. And there's Jonathan Arnada, Aranda that is, for the Rays, that's gonna go to Chris. How are we doing? Don't forget to bet your Cubs tonight. They're winning the division. Wow. You can join. Uh, you can join Rex among the ranks of delusional Cubs fans who are thinking they're going to not only win the division, maybe win the World Series, only to be bounced out of the first wild card game. Oh, there, there's your friend, Stephen Punk. Rex is, Rex is with you. Volpe and Carol. Volpe going to Joe. Carol going to Rob. What are the odds on the Cubs tonight? I wouldn't, I, I, Cubs are probably favorites tonight. I probably wouldn't, I don't bet favorites. Underdogs is the way to go. Nice, Rex saying 18 left in the next dual case. Although, fair warning, Rex, I think we got down to almost single digits in this current dual case, and then it took a couple, a couple extra nights to fill, so I wouldn't hold my breath on that. But surprise me, ladies and gentlemen, we definitely have time for another dual case. Time is not an issue. We are competing with the new release day, though. 2023 Panini Immaculate Collegiate Football is out there. Get your team, someone else does. <laughs> well, with, with every bit of success the Cubs have, <clears throat> the, the, the bar for the delusion keeps, keeps going forward. You think Matt Olson's gonna win NL MVP season punk? Should I be sleeping Matt Olson's out of here? His better numbers than Ronald Acuna Jr. What about Freddie Freeman, if that's the case? We can start talking Freddie Freeman, too. As of now, according to wins above replacement,
Ron Acuna leads the league, leads the NL with a 6-2 war. Freddie Freeman's at 5-9. Mookie Betts is 5-8. And Matt Olson is one full game under that at 4-8. So yeah, I think Matt Olson's, Matt Olson's only better in terms of home runs. Oh, and RBIs. But Acuna has 54 stolen bases on Matt Olson. More runs scored. A better average. Better on base percentage, slightly lower slugging. And a slightly better uh, WRC plus. So, Madelson's going to get MVP votes, but, but he's not going to win it. There'd be a better case to make for Freddie Freeman winning the MVP before Matt Olson, I think. Unless Matt Olson goes nuts and hits 65 home runs by the end of the season. Nico Hearn now the first Cub to 30 stolen base since 2012. Ticker tape parade time. Is he beating any, what, what about, is he beating any national records, not just club records? Nationwide records is Ronald Cunha Jr. War isn't perfect. Hassan Kane is one of the highest rated war players this year. Not an MVP, though. He's sixth overall at 4-5, according to uh, Fangraphs. So he's not among the highest Grizzlies. But he's up there, though. He's top 10. Just a little above Corbin Carroll and about the same as Francisco Lindor. In stolen bases? Fifth in stolen bases for Nico Horner? Man, the steals really did go up, didn't they? Here's Kerry Carpenter, 71 out of 150. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Kerry Car remember the Carpenters? Kerry Carpenter going to the Tigers, that'll be for Mark. As a Mets fan can tell you, it is not an MVP season for old Francisco Lindor. His war is the same as Hassam Kim, 4-5, according to uh, Fangraphs. Here's Adley Rushman, Refractor, Aaron. Thanks. But yeah, both of those, both of those players, good seasons, but no, not quite, not quite MVP material. I actually think wins above replacement is a good reflection. I mean, it's not end all be all in terms of an MVP conversation, but but generally speaking, even if you go back to older seasons when war wasn't didn't even exist or has been recalculated since, the voters usually get it right. Usually, the player with the highest wins above replacement ends up winning um, ends up winning the uh, MVP. That's exactly what wins above replacement is, Grizzle Bees. Wins above anybody? Yeah, wins above replacement is anybody. Is a replacement level player. So you're actually spot on. It is wins, it is wins above anybody. Just a guy. Oh, you mean like Postman, Garbage Man, Chef? Well, then you can look at wins above replacement stats in like the 1930s. 
were major league players were were postmen, garbage men, and chefs in the off season. Fangraphs, when was this article dated, Rex? Sometimes you've got to fact check Rex. He's, he'll be looking at an article from years ago. Fangraphs has the Cubs front says two. MLB Pipeline has them at four. Who does Cubs have at number one? Wins above Plummer. I think Ronald Acuna Jr. would have maybe 100 wins above your average Plummer. Oh, just yesterday. Who does Fangraphs have at number one? And they have Cubs at two. Number one, farm system? It's got to be Reds, maybe? Could still be the Dodgers. I don't think they tra really traded any prospects away this year. Mets, maybe? They did trade away some guys and got a big prospect haul back. For some prospects back. There's Cal Stevenson to one ninety nine. That's for the A's, that'll be for Stephen Carney. Maybe the Rangers, but yeah, they traded away uh, Acuna's brother. There's Alexis Diaz to 399, Volpe, Carroll, and Acuna Jr. I'm out, I think I'm out of guesses then. A's? All they have is prospects, right? I think they're fielding a quadruple A team now. Yeah, Grizzlebees think the same thing. Pirates, that's a good one. National League, National League East? Marlins? I suppose this could be the Braves. They, they, they draft well. They, they're, they're a smart club out there. Uh, Tim Tyler, I'll save a refractor Matt Olson for you. Because uh, Stephen Punk in the chat is convinced that he's going to win MVP, so that, that'll be for the buyback program. NL East, John Samuelson is uh, is what he was saying. You gave the answer in a hint. Oh, I see. It's clever, Rex. I thought it was just <laughs> you just misspelling National League. That was more on brand. The Nationals do? Really? Fangraphs has them at one? Where does MLB Pipeline have them at? Here's 46 out of 499 refractor autograph Miguel Vargas. That's going to be for my Dodgers, Michael Stapleton. Got sent down, but I think he's hitting well in the, um, he's hitting well in the minors. Still young, too, so he might be in the Dodgers' regular plans next year. A little more seasoning will help. Hmm, that's interesting. Stephen Punk might be lagging behind a little bit. I just answered that question before he wrote it. He'll hear it. He'll hear my answer soon. According to Lays Fangraphs, I, I think the Lays Fangraphs probably does take into consideration how those players did this season. Minor league season is almost over, so so maybe, maybe that's interesting. Well, give us the top five, Rex, according to Fangraphs. Who are the top farm systems? Pipeline has Orioles, Pirates, Brewers, and Cubs. Interesting. I skew a little more. Uh, I skew a little more fan grass, though. As an independent organization, Pipeline has Nats at eight. 
I would also uh, favor Baseball America's opinion as well, but I don't have a sub subscription to Baseball America anymore. I do, I do pay for fan graphs, though. Yeah, pipeline might still be, might still be, it might still be preseason rankings for pipeline unless they updated theirs recently too. Fangrass, if they didn't, Rex is saying they just pr printed this article yesterday, posted this article yesterday. Print, no one prints things. Um, so I would think that uh, that Fangrass is taking um, that Fangrass is taking uh, the actual seasons into consideration. So maybe. You know, if these Nationals pl uh, prospect, minor leaguers, just had a nice, had a hot season collectively, then that would certainly help their ranking. Here's Garrett Mitchell, photo negative for the Brew Crew. That's for Brian. Keith Shore, he's not around. There's Masataka Yoshida Refractor for Kenny and the Red Sox. Oh man, see, this is why you gotta fact check Rex. Fangraph saying Pirates Cubs Nats. Pirates, I feel like, make more sense. Brett Beatty, radiating rookie. Nice. That's for Joe and the Mets. I think he got optioned back to AAA, but I think he still still has some upside there. And those those are short prints, one per case. Case hit, so it's always nice to have that. And there's Logan Ohabi. This is one to hold as well. 19 out of 25 orange wave autograph for the Angels. Kenny with the Halos. Had him on my fantasy team earlier this year. I thought he could have been on his way to an all-star season before his injury, but he should be back and probably be the regular catcher for the Angels going forward. There's no Tani. And a green relic? Giancarlo Stan, you got a bit of the pinstripe here. And it's out of 99, nice. Yanks, that's gonna be for Joe Simone. Or Simone, could be Simone. That's where they're playing the, the golf in September, the Ryder Cup at Marco Simone. In Rome? Near Rome? All right. Two boxes from the first case, and then we got another case to go. A Merlin soccer break on the site, ladies and gentlemen.
I mean, I personally prefer fangrass. Other people may, may prefer pipeline. Yankees at 25 doesn't surprise me. Astros at 30 does surprise me, though. Oh, Gilo's still researching what EPL team. You gotta hurry, Gilo. They're already, they're gonna play their second games this weekend. I don't want you to pick a front running team. Don't do that. Are you gonna go to a team that's closest to Royals colors? Teams that are closest to uh, Chiefs colors, Gilo, or t colors that are closest to Sporting KC's colors? I think you got to go with Sporting KC colors. That is a sharp color scheme. I, mean, I guess it's kind of Man City-ish, though. That would be kind of front-running, though. All right. Another box. Austin Hayes to two ninety nine. Yeah, pipeline's okay though. It's not bad. I prefer. I just simply prefer fan graphs, and I think the Athletic has uh, has had Keith Law on his on their staff for a while, and I like his. He's he's a good minor league expert. But I don't know if he has. I don't know if he has uh, any recent, any recent farm system rankings though. There's Ezekiel Duran Duran, 112 out of 199. Hungry like the wolf. That's going to go to Tim and the Texas Rangers. All right, Gilo wants a blue Premier League team. I suppose that'd be Chelsea. That's who. Uh, that's who Nick Jaspi supports. That's his Premier League team, Chelsea. Nice Corbin Carroll, Aqua Lava. 98 out of 199. There you go, Rob. Rob of the Snakes. Now the Lava Refractor, I think, is one of my favorite sort of new entries into the parallel world. Let me get that. Bit of top loader dust out of there that was over there. Real sharp. Real sharp. All right, last box of the first case coming up, and then another case. Leicester City would have been a good blue team to support Gilo. Sort of a, an underdoggy kind of team where long shots to win the Premier League, and they did it about five, six years ago as one of the longest shots to win the Premier League. But unfortunately, I think they were relegated this past season. Sort of a royalty kind of story. And a blue team. Or you could go with the the team that has the has key American players on their team with the World Cup coming up in a few years. Two years. Good excuse to follow teams like that. I don't know what team that is. I don't know who the best American is over there now. Pulisic went to Italy. Any soccer fans out there? Who's the best American national national team player? On what EPL team? I think. I 
Well, I think it's rumored, something to keep an eye on, Gilo, but the trans the trading deadline, they call it the transfer window, ends at the uh, at the end of the month, the end of August. And Tyler Adams is at Leeds, and Leeds were relegated uh, this season, so but I think he's looking for a move back up to a Premier League team, which I think he's capable of doing. I think he's actually might be going to Bournemouth. Or Gilo, you could pick a side. Uh, you could pick a side that would be at a place that you would visit someday. So maybe a London club or a Northern England club. You may end up choosing a team in the middle of nowhere, and you're like, all right, I gotta fly into Heathrow, and then I gotta find a way to get, drive five hours away somewhere. And, although, it wouldn't be five hours, I guess. It could be five hours, I suppose, but England's not very big, size-wise. Geographically. Square miles wise. There's Kirsch, Clayton Kershaw, 40 out of 50, true gold. Nice. Going to the Dodgers, Michael. Michael S with the Dodgers. Maybe you maybe you pick wherever you went to Europe, Gila. Maybe you pick that team. Ah, well, Gilo, just know that the, uh, there's a Jonah Bride, do, 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 179 out of 299 for the A's, I'll go to Stephen Carney. Just know that, that Chelsea's new ownership is, uh, is a partial owner of the, uh, is a part owner of the Los Angeles Dodgers. So any piece of merch you buy for Chelsea would somehow trickle its way down to helping the Dodgers. So I appreciate that in advance. There's Hugh Darvish at 350. All right, that was case one. But unlike some college basketball players, we are not one and done. We're two and done. Here's the second hobby case. Good luck, everybody. Second hobby case. Thanks everybody for uh, for making this happen. Now, what about are we going to make some new releases happen? I'm going to stack the entire case up here. See the entire case right there. Um, there was only one team taken in Immaculate Collegiate. That's a good candidate for a filler. So, get your teams before they're gone. The football mixer full spot is sold out, and we're down to seven left in the last filler. So that'll probably be the next break after uh, that'll probably be the next break after after my after this break and the dinner break. The next dual case is holding at 18. Still 8 of 10 left in NT. Jason was really liking that, speaking of soccer, Jason was really liking that Tops UEFA club competitions. Right there, only 30 bucks. Gilo, how about this? What if you buy a couple spots in that UEFA club competitions break? A brand new release. And then whatever team you get randomized, whatever Premier League team you get randomized, if you get a big hit out of there, or an auto, that'll be your team. 
I'm going to adopt that team for the season to see if it sticks. Uh, Chelsea is not in any of the European competitions this year. But their old ownership was, uh, was Roman Abramovich. The big, uh, the big Russian oil oligarch. So he had owned the club for a long time and dumped a bunch of money into it. I think shortly after the Ukraine conflict, was it Ukraine conflict that ended up making him sell the team? Or maybe it was before that. Anyway, sold the team. Uh, traditionally, they are, a, they are one of the big clubs. They've won Champions Leagues. They've had some legendary players that played on, on England national teams. So they're a big team have uh, fallen on a little rough times the last handful of years, but they've made a lot of big money moves this off season and are trying to make their way back into the top four, which would give them uh, a return to the Champions League. It's gonna be a tough battle though. They should be a lot, a lot better team this year. So they should end up being in somewhere in the top five or six conversation. It's crowded though, it's a crowded marketplace up there. A lot of teams have improved. It's gonna be, a, should be a really good season, I think. for the Angels, that's for Kenny. There's Mike Trout, 56 out of 99, green wave. I think he's slowly making his way back from that wrist injury. Yeah, I mean, that would be a fun way, that'd be a fun story. It's like, hey, how'd you end up being a fan of this that's a common question among for, for American fans, right? They're like, hey, how'd you become a fan? So how'd you end up supporting this club? And you could be the that'd be a fun story. I joined a group break on Jaspies, bought a couple spots, got randomized a Premier League team, and uh, you know, got a nice hit out of there. And I said, well, I guess I'll, I guess now I'll adopt this team. And that's how I like this team. There's Stephen Kwan for Stephen, for Stephen Carney and the Guardians. And there's our autograph, that's Matthew Libertor. Rookie auto for the Cardinals. And that's Joe Andreessen, that's one of the last teams taken to. teams are on this list. Probably at least four or five. Right. Arsenal, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, Man United, Tottenham. Oh, you know, and West Ham is in it. I realize that it's club competition, not just Champions League, it's club competition. So I think it includes uh, the, includes the, there's three tiers of European competition where all the other different countries' clubs play each other. The Champions League is the top dog. And some even consider that 
a, you know, a, a more worthy competition than their own domestic leagues. But the Champions League's on top. The tournament under that is, is Europa League. And there's a third tournament that was recently introduced, Conference League. I think West Ham won, won that last year. That's, on, that's in the combo spot. Actually, no. <laughs> There's not a lot. I think it's pretty spread out because really, in each in each domestic league, it's only the, the top four. I think England gets one more Champions League team this year. It could be top five this year, but it's only the only top four in each each league. So there's probably about like, and then they include the other competitions too. So it looks like only only like four or five Premier League teams on that list. And there's four or five Spanish teams, four or five German teams, four or five Italian teams, and, and we comboed up some of the smaller countries, and then, and then there you go. Maybe wait for a, a Premier League product, a Premier League only product. Although I don't know when that's gonna be. Got a Marcus Stroman. Speckle to 350. And Volpe and Carroll right next to each other. And usually, more often than not, Ronald Acuna Jr. is right behind there. There he is. Got her autograph? No, it's flipped around. Uh, Juan Soto, that's a short print. See 173 on the back there. I think 121. Yeah, one these are tiny little numbers right here, but 121 is the is the base, and then 173 are the shorter printed image variations. Nice Juan Soto for the Padres, that'll be for Michael. And there's Vinny Pascantino, 182 out of 299 for Gabe's Royals. Who bought him? John did. John with Kansas City in this one. Let's see what's going on in the world of baseball today. <laughs> scoreboard, <laughs> scoreboard watch. We can whip around the league. Hydration for my voice here. Uh, there are some games that are done, some early games. Uh, Tigers beat the Twins. Eight to seven. Tigers hit back-to-back -back home runs in the seventh. I think Torkelson's been having a nice home run run here. Mets beat the Pirates eight to three. DJ Stewart goes off for a two-run, two-homer day against the Pirates. Diamondback beat the Rockies in Colorado nine to seven. Christian Walker hits two 400-plus foot homers against the Rockies. 
And the Rays beat the Giants six to one. Apparently the lows power the Rays win. Low and loud. Have uh, have done that. The lows and the lows. And Peters, what's going on? And there are some games in progress. We've got Eddie Rosario just hit a home run for the Braves. That's on MLB Network. They're up 2-0 on the Yankees early. Bottom of the second. We do open basketball and football. We don't have too much basketball on the website right now, but we've got tons of football. Jaspiescasebreaks.com. Check out the website. And when it sells out, we'll do it. Guardians at Reds tied at one, bottom of the fourth. And it was Syndergaard with the start for the Guardians. Top of the fourth, Astros leading the Marlins in Miami, 6-2. to two. Top of the fourth in St. Louis, A's up big, 5 nothing early on. Oh, unfortunately, Matt, Matthew Libertor, who we just pulled, has given up five earned in three and two-thirds. Bottom of the third in D.C., Nationals are up one nothing on the Red Sox. Bottom of the second, Blue Jays up on the Phillies 2-1. And like I said, Braves up early 2-0 on the Yankees. All right, next box, good luck. Autograph popping early, it's for the White Sox. Oscar Colas, 251 out of 299 purple speckle autograph for Rylan. You got Sean Murphy to 399. And a nice Jordan Walker refractor for the Cardinals. That will be for Joe. Yoshida goes to Kenny and the Red Sox. And the Sean Murphy goes to Tim and the Braves. Speaking of Murphy, I think, remember Daniel Murphy who was trying to make a comeback? I think he's no longer making that comeback. There's Adley Rushman. Nice relic there. And that'll be for Aaron and the O's. Nice. There's a Prism, Jordan Walker. Christopher Morell to 199 Cubbies. It'll be for uh, Steven. Chicago. There's a Miguel Vargas refractor that might be might be a hold. And a Francisco Alvarez radiating rookie. I think the radiating rookie in the first case was a Met. I don't remember. Bad bad short term memory. But here's a here's one for Joe. A big part of the uh, of the Mets' future. Sort of doing the doing the non-rebuild rebuild. I think with the with the deep pockets that the Mets have, I don't think they'll be rebuilding for very long. Another box. Uh, games not yet happening. 
But the Angels are in Texas. They're, they're putting a 2 and 9, 5 2 7 ERA Reed Detmers on the mound. They'll be facing John Gray, 8 and 5, 3 6 5 ERA. That is a battle for Chicago. White Sox are in Wrigley. Mike Clevenger on the mound and Assad on the mound for the Cubs. Chad, can Immaculate Collegiate break today? Yes, today is new release day. Chad, so get your teams, get after it. Let's fill it and break it. We had our friend Stephen Punk earlier saying I should, uh, I should wager some money, invest in the Chicago Cubs' success tonight, but uh, not, not too much value at minus 170. Is there a checklist for this college? Yes, Cardboard collect, connect, cardboardconnection.com. Unfortunately, I heard a couple weeks ago that group break checklist is no longer uh, doing checklists. At least the main person that was doing it stepped away. So they're figuring out what, what they're going to do with the, uh, with the site. But I'm sure um, there are other checklist resource sites that may match them with NFL teams. We're going to go by our, our collegiate rules, which means it'll go by the teams that they are currently on, if they're active, and the team they played for the longest if they're retired. Brayton Ninja is a good one. Do they have a... Do they have this immaculate collegiate group by NFL teams, Gilo? And then we got a Francisco Lindor. Green, 37 out of 99. Their interface kind of sucks, but they've had the most checklists last night. They have the most checklists. I'll have to take a look, see if there's immaculate collegiate football from today on there. Ooh, nice auto. 57 out of 250, Masataka Yoshida. Purple chrome autograph for the Boston Red Sox, Kenny. Nice. This has been a strong dual case break. We've seen some of the bigger names pop. We've been seeing some, some parallels. We've been seeing these Otanis. Seeing some Francisco Alvarez's and an orange Nate Eaton. 22 out of 25. Love the orange parallels. Nice jaspy orange there going to John and the Royals. All right, another box down. Uh, what else is happening? Mariners are in Kansas City. Gilo's not. Gilo, you're not going to the game? Bunch of monster boxes for our 10 case break tomorrow. I'm going to leave them in here. Uh, leave them in the Fanatics live room because it's a Fanatics live break. Oh, cool. What? Six? Uh, I think so. Should be. How many? What? What is a monster? Monster box holds two jumbo cases, I think. Maybe five. Maybe five. But five or six hits. I need to load up the hits in there too. Mariners World Series has been pretty electric. I think it's some, some walk offs. You can see that Royals actually playing some good baseball lately. <laughs> Mariners heating up too. 
Orioles are in San Diego. Oh, in the in the Royals game, Luis Castillo is facing some kid named MacArthur. There's an 0-0 record and a 13-5 ERA. He must not have pitched very many innings. Maybe an opener. Orioles at Padres. Dean Kramer versus Blake Snell. And the Brewers are in Los Angeles. Wade Miley. Um, Wade Miley is facing Clayton Kershaw. Dodgers are a heavy favorite to this game. Minus 250. Jeez. I would, uh, um, I would pick the other side just in case. much more valley on the other side. I think. Nothing too crazy. A little coffee money maybe, lunch money. We got a Luis Robert Aqua. And that is for Ryan and the White Sox. Or Ryland, there's an L in there. Ryland and the right White Sox. And a relic here, DJ LeMahieu for the Yankees. Joe with the Bronx Bombers. Photo negative, Kodai Senga. And it'll be for Joe and the Mets. And, well, another radiating rookie. That's our second of the case, Gunnar Henderson. Gunnar Henderson going to Aaron Billingsley. There you go, Aaron. Is that your AL Rookie of the Year right there? Maybe. And there's your autograph. That's Cody Clements. One, uh, no, 427 out of 490. Not, not 127, 427. That will be for Mark and the Tigers. Next box. Let's take a look at the latest AL Rookie of the Year odds. I don't know if, uh, yeah, there's been some changes here. As of a week or so ago, a strong month has pushed, according to sporting, sportsbettingdime.com, which, which does a great job tracking the odds as they change throughout the year, has pushed Gunnar Henderson to the top of the 2023 AL Rookie of the Year at odds at minus 216. Yoshida is the only real competition at plus 210. It's about 2 to 1. Gunnar Henderson is 1 to 2. <laughs> so there you go. Nice time to get that radiating rookie, Aaron. As of now, 
It's basically Yoshida and Henderson. Are right, your rookie AL rookie of the year favorites? Then it jumps up to uh, fifteen to one plus fifteen hundred. Tristan Casas, and then Josh Young, of course, with that injury, has fallen to plus two thousand. Guys like Tanner Beebe, Hunter Brown, they're not really in the conversation. Uh, in the NL, yeah, Corbin Carroll is the heavy, heavy favorite at minus 750. Next close is Ellie Dela Cruz at plus 1200. Which means, if you're not familiar with this, which means at minus 750, you would have to pay the book $750 to get $100 back. As opposed to on the plus side, plus 1200, if you gave the book $100, it'll give you $1200 back. It'll give you an idea of how, how, how broad, how, how heavy of a favorite Corbin Carroll is. Take a look at the other awards races in the next couple boxes. All right, next box. Mike Yastrzemski, Refractor, and the auto popping early. That's Elia Hernandez, 42 out of 150, blue Ray Wave autograph going to Tim and the Rangers. We got Nolan Jones, Green Wave, 46 out of 99. I don't know if you heard the story in the background on the TV. Here's a true gold color match Cal Mitchell rookie to 50. Pirates, that's going to be for Chris, Chris Parent. Mookie Betts was in the on-deck circle the other night, and it's a fan that was sitting there yelled to him, hey, if you hit a homer, I'm going to name my daughter after you. He was expecting the daughter in a, within a week or two. Or I guess this was a couple weeks ago. And then uh, Mookie's like, no, don't, don't do that. Don't, 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 make, don't name your daughter Mookie. Your wife's going to hate it. It's not going to work. Blah, blah, blah. Sure enough, he hits a homer. And I think a couple weeks later, after, after this fan's daughter was born, I think he had, he had reached out to Mookie on social media or something like that. He's like, I'm a man of my word. I did. It ended up being his daughter's middle name. I thought that was a cute story. Mookie Betts was honored. Uh, here's Riley Green, refractor for Mark. And another box coming up. I don't think there's any, any major changes in the MVP running, right? Per Vegas, yeah. Otani's the heavy favorite in the AL at minus 750. Next closest is Corey Seager at plus 1700. Then it jumps to 35 to 1 for Marcus Simeon. Marcus Simeon, Wander Franco, Bo Bichette, Randy Arizrania, all at the same odds. That's, they're not going to get it. It's Otani. Heavy favorite, unless there's some surprises. I, I, I wouldn't be no value in betting, betting Otani at all. And uh, in the NL, yeah, it still stands as Acuna Jr. as the heavy favorite, minus three thirty. 
What's surprising is that they got this. This book currently has Mookie Betts at second at six to one. And then Freeman's at twelve to one. Maybe they're thinking those two Dodger players end up splitting the votes. Yeah, I don't think there's too many changes there. What about A.L. Cy Young? Garrett Cole's the favorite. Kevin Gossman's behind him. Garrett Cole's minus 275. Gossman, about 5 to 1, plus 475. N.L. Cy Young, Zach Gallen. I guess this is the only race that seems a little not decided because both Zach Gallen and Blake Snell, they're both about plus 200. Justin Steele for the Cubs at plus 475. I kind of, speaking of bets, there's a nice little variation there. Um, I kind of like uh, Justin Steele at that price point. The NL Cy Young not decided. I'm going to put a little coffee money on that. Justin Steele not decided, uh, is having a good season. The race itself is not decided. No minus numbers on here, you know. And if he has a strong August and September, leading the Cubs into the playoffs, that'd be a nice little story. All right, great image variation here, Mookie Betts. Dodgers, Michael, my Dodgers. Right on cue after that, that uh, Mookie Betts story. And the autograph is a nice one. Michael Harris the second, an image variation and Michael Harris Jr. rookie autograph. Same box. Tim Tyler with the Braves. Nice. Francisco Alvarez in the mix here. Got Giancarlo Stan to 150. Volpe, Carroll, and Acuna Jr. That's usually the pattern. Bets. You know what? I mean, if he's second in the, I mean, I don't think he's going to win it, but if he's second in MVP odds, maybe hold this one for the buyback program. Michael with the Dodgers. I would imagine it would have to. You have to be a slump of epic proportions or or a history making level of hitting in a month and a half for uh, for Mookie for him to be able to to win NL MVP though. I think both would have to happen. An epic slump and an epic offensive record setting month. I guess it's happened before. I think that happened in the Josh Donaldson you remember that? Did that? I want to say it was the Josh Donaldson MVP year. I think he just, in the last month or so, he just went nuts and led the Blue Jays, I think, to the playoffs. Baseball writers like that, like those kind of narratives, the, especially player leading his team to the playoffs.
Any major changes in the standing since we looked at it yesterday? I don't think so, right? Orioles still two and a half games ahead of the Rays. Twins still leading the Guardians. Astros still three and a half behind the Rangers. I don't think, uh, I think NL East is spoken for. Braves are 12 and a half ahead of the Phillies. Cubs are three and a half behind the Brewers. Dodgers nine and a half ahead of the Giants. <laughs> I feel like there was all this conversation about all this conversation about the Dodgers not doing anything in the offseason, not doing anything, anything in the trading deadline. And next thing you know, you know, they've got the second best record in the NL. And are on a nine game winning streak. I suppose the Dodgers front office knows what they're doing. They've got a plus 140 run differential. Second best in the NL behind the Braves, plus 206 run differential. All right, it's Josh Young. Gold Wave Jazz Chisholm, 9 out of 50. Nice bit of photography there. There you go, Chris Parent. There's Ezekiel Tovar to 99. That's also an image variation, 173, and numbered to 99. Rockies. It'll be for Nathaniel Smith. I think Freddie Freeman is a good, uh, good case. If it's not Acuna, if Acuna didn't exist, I think Freddie Freeman might be, might be your MVP. Twins. We got uh, Jason with the Twins. He's going to get the Louis Varlin. Five, Chris Bryant for the Rockies. Nathaniel Smith with the Rocks. Not too shabby. Out of fives and under, get the train whistle. All aboard the Big Hit Express. Woo -woo. Nice. there folks only four boxes left right here almost there how are we doing on the new releases today ladies and gentlemen we got immaculate football 2023 immaculate football brand new release current NFL draft class pick your team number one is down to 18 If we can get this a little over halfway there, I could pop the rest of it into a filler. 
And then we can get that done. Looks like that football mixer is sold out. Nice. I'm, gonna, I'm planning on taking a quick little break after this. And then we'll come back and we'll uh, get that football mixer going. And then maybe some of that immaculate collegiate football. Ooh, nice gold Aaron Judge there. Now maybe I'll... Maybe I'll put those remaining teams into some sort of filler before I before I go. Yeah, maybe I'll put the that immaculate cleavage into a number block that he's doing. So get your teams now. If you're eyeing a team and you don't want to end up being a filler, you want to get it all for yourself, you know what to do. Gotta get at least one case done tonight. Hey, that one case could inspire multiple cases to be popped open. Another Josh Young to start off with for the Rangers. And there's the Aaron Judge. 46 out of 50. Joe and the Yankees. An old uh, late 80s design there. And there's Louis Varlin. Rookie auto. Oof. Zuna just missed a, missed a home run. We got a Paul Goldschmidt photo negative for St. Louis for Joe Andreessen. Joe A, we got a Joe S and a Joe A. David Villar to 350, Speckle. Oh, nice show, Otani Prison. Kenny with the Angels. Another base Otani. Rosario was walking away. He thought that was a walk for him. Um, calls it a strike. That was high. It was a walk. Now it's a walk. Thank you. 
we're getting there. And Ezekiel Tovar is your autograph. Three, three, one, four out of four ninety nine refractor autograph for Nathaniel. Nice. Where's he looking here? Where's Max Fried looking? He's got sort of like sort of a Fernando wind up there. Mark Stroman to two ninety nine. For Steven and the Cubs. Uh, Tristan Casas, rookie refractor for Kenny and the Red Sox. Got a Gunnar Henderson, refractor for the O's. You're uh, at the moment the favorite for AL Rookie of the Year. Here's your other favorite in the NL, Corbin Carroll. <laughs> Ronald Cunha Jr., Josh Young. There's a Riley Green Prism and a Yoshida. And an MJ Melendez at What are some interesting uh, individual stats that, that players are working on here? I guess it was, does Ronald Acuna Jr. end up with 50 home runs? Does he have a 50-50 season? No, he's too far away for that. 40? 40 season? He's got 55 stolen bases, but does he have a 40-40 season? He's at 27, I think, now. You definitely have to get it to maybe 33, 35 home runs. By the end of the, the, the month, I think. And then I think he might have a good shot. He might actually go for it. That would lock in NL MVP, I would think. Four hundred one, unless Luis Arias just goes nuts. I don't think four hundred watches off, right? He's at three sixty three. Next box. And there's Austin Hayes. Nice catch, Austin. Or is it a catch? I'm not sure. I don't see the baseball. 12 out of two. We'll say it's a catch. 12 out of 299 for Aaron and the O's.
And we got JJ, uh, JJ Blade, 82 out of 199. Oakland A's, Aqua Lava. Receiving. And a gold wave autograph, 16 out of 50, Oscar Gonzalez for the Guardians. Stephen Carney. Cleveland, this is for you. And there's an Otani, there's a Nolan Gorman rookie refractor for Joe Andreessen. And the Cardinals, Francisco Alvarez. Final box coming up, we made it. So here is box 24 of the dual case break from jazbeescasebreaks.com. Got the other dual case break already halfway there. Or about halfway there. We'll do an autograph recap after this. And then I gotta snap pictures of some of the big hits out of here. And we're gonna go through some more orders, line up a schedule, a post dinner break schedule, and then I'll go ahead and refuel and come back and dive into some more breaks. 2012, oh, and I'm also gonna put the remainder of a Maca Collegiate into some sort of some sort of filler. Gotta get at least one of those cases across the finish line. Brand new release. We got Merlin Chrome uh, Soccer. Soccer fans. That would be a fun one too. That's another new release. All right, 24th and final box. Good luck, everybody. Let's see where we're gonna end. We're gonna end with a Ken Waldachuk autograph. That's for the Oakland A's, Stephen Carney. And let's see if we can close with some, uh, some low numbered parallels. Maybe some image variations, something special. Got a Brian Reynolds photo negative for the Pirates. That'll be for Chris. Got an Adley Rushman base. And a Miguel Vargas wave at the end. Uh, nothing too crazy to finish, but overall, a pretty nice break. Miguel Vargas is 55 out of 75. For the Dodgers, that'll be for Michael. And Dunzo's just logging in the break just under two hours, one hour and 56 minutes. All right, this was from the first case. 
Nice Corbin Carroll aqua lava. I want to snap a picture of that. Logan O'Hoppy was cool. The Brett Beatty radiating rookie. A lot of nice color here. Pop in the Corbin Carroll refractor. Two relics in this, in this case right here. The case we just did, second case. Got the Otani, the five out of five Chris Bryant. Michael Harris, the Mookie Betts image variation, the Gunnar Henderson radiating rookie, the Francisco Alvarez radiating rookie, the Juan Soto was a very image variation, Matthew Libertor, some awesome stuff there. Thanks everyone, tons of parallels and other cards that are gonna be sleeved up and sorted out and shipped off to you. Obviously, a two case break, it's a lot of cards. Uh, give the shipping team a little, bit, a little bit of time to get all this sorted and sent out to you. So we appreciate your patience on that. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next break, bye-bye.